Hello everybody, my name is Eric and today we're going to be talking about a seriously problematic fake Mac app epidemic that has been going around and this could spread beyond macOS. But I've got the files, so what's happened here is a few Reddit accounts have been going around Reddit, primarily the macOS subreddit, although a few others as well, promoting fake software. The first one that came out was something called Nintendify. Now, oh. Now, this is what the GitHub looked like. It's actually been taken down. Uh, it was called Nintendifier. Turn anything into a Mario level with a selection on macOS. And supposedly what this would do is it would take a screenshot of something and somehow, I suppose, using AI, turn it into a Mario level. So you could, uh, and there was some source code here, but I'm going to assume that was fake. The GitHub is down now, so I can't get the bogus source code. But don't worry, I have all of the dodgy files here. So, on the all Mac OS subreddit, turn your selection into a Mario level. Now, Redditors eventually figured this out, but not until downloading this quite a bit, that this is a virus. Now, this is something that hasn't been seen in a while. It's quite common for counterfeit software. To be filled with malware. But this is someone making something they claim is an entirely new piece of software with a cool idea, and it's actually just a virus. I've seen this with things like game emulators, but there's quite a bit of effort being put into fooling people here. For, and this is targeting the macOS community, which really hasn't experienced info stealers to the same extent. Windows users have been dealing with the info stealer epidemic for years. Uh, Mac are usually better off, and we will be taking a look at this on a sandbox so we can see to what extent the better security features of macOS actually do uh, mitigate this. Now here is someone who doesn't quite understand uh, what's going on, uh, but this was in fact uh, a similar info stealer, and luckily because they're on a Mac, they would have to enter their password to get pwned, but you might do that thinking it's something real. So then the second attack was Clippy for macOS. Now, Clippy was like a Windows Assistant 20 years ago. Basically, Copilot before Copilot. And this person says they made an AI assistant called Clippy on macOS. I don't really see the appeal of this. The Clippy character didn't really work. I, I, and I also don't really understand why you download this random thing from a random guy uh, when there are plenty of legitimate AI assistants already available for macOS. Much every company that makes one has a Mac app, uh, but unfortunately the DMG file turned out to be malware. Uh, this was Amos Stealer. All of these are actually Amos Stealer. So then someone posted a PSA. And then, okay, this is wrong. This is, this is the real PSA. This is the fake PSA. So someone did notice this was fake. But this person went to the Bitcoin subreddit, which is interesting because this is a mainly going to be a Bitcoin stealer. And they say, PSA, downloaded a fun Mac app from Reddit, almost lost everything, telling the story of these different dangerous Mac apps. A PSA for hot wallet users. But then, what turns out, and that's why this was removed, I'm sorry to hear this happened to you. Now at this point, uh, the scammer is going to recommend a tool called Shield Key that is actually more malware. Now, this is something I've never seen happen before. This moderator actually spoke to someone in my Discord who was reporting this and told us about this. So, they basically got the malware equivalent of a recovery room scam, but unlike a real recovery room, they could also hit people who hadn't fallen for the first one but might want to be safe. So let's go over to Shield Key now. This one is still up, unlike the other ones. So Features, Wallets, FAQ. Now something I just noticed while I was going through this. Note who the developer on GitHub for Nintendifier is. Oh right, Shield Key. Uh, they probably should have used a different name but I guess they weren't that high effort. Antivirus won't save your coins. I might honestly agree with that line. Shield coin or shield key locks down your wallets, blocks malware, and keeps your crypto safe on macOS. If you're on Windows, there could be a case for this product existing. But let me just point out that macOS does that by default. macOS has app level, a reasonable amount. I mean, I would recommend, like, of course, there's enterprise solutions that are better. Uh, but macOS has a sane amount of application ring fencing. Windows doesn't, which is why I would recommend something like a threat locker. This isn't a sponsored video, I'm just saying like a product that does lock down applications. Uh, but So this product doesn't, 
it seems like a weird niche and they give you a security score you've got like a gui here it doesn't look terribly complicated and it's basically supposed to be a crypto protector now another thing you'll note is every one of these malicious downloads will go to a macshare.php file that may be on a different website but it's always got this php and it does have a slightly different payload but this one also has a terminal installer now this is similar to the iex for windows but i have seen legitimate mac software do this before um, and famous like the rust programming language when you install that uses something like this so I actually did get my hands on this install.sh file. Now, of course, uh, given uh, it does have user agent blocking, so we had to use curl to get it. So curl-o temp update this, and then we execute it. Now, the update file is right there. This is actually a Mac binary, and it's similar to what's inside of these other two. We've got a clippy.dmg and a nintendifier. Now, I believe 7-zip can open these, so we can actually see clippy... And ultimately, the file inside of Clippy is very similar, though it is slightly different. So now let's go on over to the sandbox. Now, my preferred sandbox, AnyRun, doesn't have macOS support currently, but Triage does. So let's put this onto Triage and see what we can triage. So we've got a few options. First of all, we'll do the supposed antivirus. Go through... And, of course, this is a macOS file, and we can just analyze it. And we'll just wait for the Mac sandbox to start up, and it should immediately ask us for a password. Oh, that was just the screen time alert. We might have to do it this way because it's not. Segmentation fault. That's a weird error. So let's try some of the other ones. It's possible... Oh! Uh defense so that actually did get a detection then so that's getting a 7 out of 10 now let's see if any of the others will be a bit more juicy they will at least have fake icons so we got clippy and nintendifier i'm gonna try nintendifier because that seems more interesting so here it is now this one's actually got a cool looking icon so i could i could see a reasonable person following falling for this and rather than telling you to install it it actually just tells you to run it so we've now got a console window that popped up, which, of course, we all know is a bit scary. Oh, but we get a segmentation fault from the actual, uh, when we run it from the terminal. No, we know this is not legit. We can upload these to virus total, and they are well detected. Getting Amos Stealer across the board on these questionable files. But let's see if we can get more of an idea of what these do by doing some static analysis. I don't really know what the Packer ecosystem is like on macOS, which will ultimately dictate whether we're going to get anything useful, because I certainly don't have a, a debugging setup for this to unpack some Mac malware. I'll just throw this one in here. Okay, haven't seen that before. That's not a good sign. Uh, and of course, on Mac executables, because they're usually universal binaries, uh, you gotta do, you gotta pick which one you want to hit. So we're just gonna go with the Intel, because I I can read x86 assembly, but I really can't read ELM assembly to any any useful degree. Looks like there's some sort of an XOR cipher going on here. So we've got this data blob minus this data blob XOR this data blob. And it's just doing some pointer arithmetic here. And we step through every four bytes just to add another layer of obfuscation. See if uh, ChatGPT's code interpreter will get this out. Because I have pretty, I've got this VM pretty locked down, so I can't do a lot of Python on here. So hopefully that will work out. I won't have to do anything locally. Looks like we're making progress. And then as we sc scroll down, we get more of these, and then there's some string concatenation. And ultimately, uh, at the bottom, there is a call to system, which I'd assume probably works like system does on Windows, where that will then run a command line. So basically what we've got here is actually like another piece of Mac malware I looked at. We essentially have a malicious batch script or bash script, not batch, batch is Windows, that is wrapped in a wrapped in here. 
There's no there's no complicated uh, logic written in a low level programming language. And the first one we got may actually be some sort of anti analysis because this runs uh, RDI seven. I haven't completely traced this out, but I am just making the assumption that out ultimately manages to get copied into this. And if that is true, then the out of this ultimately gets executed by system. And now we have gone deep into the weeds. Well, I, I can't fault it. it. Did what I asked it to do, but it seems this isn't a uh, plain text because the first one doesn't seem to be a script. Uh, the first one seems to be uh, producing a string, a different string. Okay, so what we got here is some sort of custom encryption algorithm. Uh, this is this first out that ultimately gets copied, uh, and this one uh, we see persists is actually the key, and that is why uh, in the mist of O3 outputs, it does it, it dumps something that looks like uh, looks like a base sixty four, but because it is actually a custom alphabet for a decoder. And that is why it is a dependent for all the others. And now I do have a script. I did a bit more. So the first one gives you the base 64 code, and then the second gives you a string that can be decoded with the base 64 code. So I'm just going through the process of getting these out right now. So we create these, and of course we can just write them. I'm just going to get the directory I want to put these in. Let's make life a little easier with the by making a function. Okay, actually I had to give up. There's some weird formatting going on here. So, oh, actually I know what that's about. Because on Windows, backslashes, backslashes suck, and that's that's why that happens. So, uh, let's just, let's just uh, skip that. Now we've got these three files. And we can use them like this. And now we just gotta see if whatever came out uh, is any good. Or anything at all. And now we finally got an output. There is one more trick. And boom. Yup, exactly as I was expecting. The first one is anti-analysis. So the trick here uh, was uh, I had O3 make this script, but it missed one thing, which is the output uh, of these dumped values is actually a hex string, which then has to be converted by this into individual ASCII characters, then you do that. So that was the only thing we'd missed. Uh, so with that, um, stepping over out because I thought I'd done something else wrong, uh, we've now got a good fix. So now we can dump any data we want. So could also patch that out. So essentially, this whole thing is just a bunch of bash malware wrapped really nastily. This second base, second sub, now we can just pretty quickly replicate the code that we used before. Sounds like we're talking about baseball here. One E0 O. Now let's check the second one. Of course, I could write a binary ninja script to actually automate the dumping, but uh, here we go. So set release to true, set file grabbers to true. And we've actually got shockingly clean source code. So it goes through uh, ledger live. This is the actual... Seems like it may actually replace that with... Okay, that actually makes a lot of sense when you consider how a hardware wallet works. This will probably be a piece of malware that is designed to socially engineer you into handing over your crypto. I'll check that in a second. Now we've got our cookie stealing, plugin grabbing. Here's going to be a list of crypto plugins to steal. Here's your telegram stealer. Now to me, this seems like it's pretty focused on crypto... The weird that it does have Waterfox, which is something that very few people use these days. So I am just going to upload this fake ledger live because I'm curious what that did. And then I think we're going to call this a day. Okay. And here is our file. And then once we unzip this, uh, we'll have our fake ledger live that we actually can't run. Oh, but there's a... Okay, well, luckily, I think we can make enough of this out to say, all right, uh, n.html, let's see what that one does. You can open that up in a browser. You know, even without getting a deep view of this, I can be, well, I mean, I could be 100% confident this was fake from the fact that, from the source, but let's give this a second to run. This VM is really slow. Your ledger live uh, is corrupted. 
yeah, so this is just a attempt at steal. This is a social engineering exploit because, of course, a cryptocurrency hardware wallet by design isn't susceptible to an info stealer. So this is a fairly interesting attempt. It's not hard. It's not terribly uh, sophisticated. I was able to statically unpack it uh, quite quickly. I could try writing a more generic unpacker, but they'd probably just write a workaround. That's going to be all from me for now. So there's an epidemic of fake apps going around. What will they do? They'll steal your credentials, steal any cryptocurrencies you have. It's all from me for now. Bye.